Hi, this is Karen O'Brien and I've been received a question about how to do hazard mapping if your project is too big for Mapper. So let me just start by saying that if your project is too big for Mapper and you did an animation run like a time series output, just maybe rename or delete or move those time series output files and try Mapper again because this is quite a bit easier to do in Mapper. But if you just can't load it into Mapper because it's just too big, that's perfectly fine. This is a much better way to uh, deal with that. Let's just go ahead and get started. So what I have here is a project, a coastal project that I've been working on. And it is a little bit weird because it has a lot of ponded water that's not moving very fast. And it's not really that deep because it has LiDAR data that does not include you know the actual depths of these ponds so uh, that's something to consider when you're doing your own project is how to handle that um, but you probably won't see that if you're doing a mud flow model you're not going to see weird things like that uh, so let's start with how we set this up now there's something about this mesh tool that I have to you know just let you know that there's just a couple of little things that you need to be careful with so First of all, if you're doing hazard mapping, you do not need any time series output. So if you wanna just leave that to zero, that's perfectly fine. If you do want some time series output because you wanna animate some stuff, then you need to set this to two or four and you need to set your output interval to, I would suggest to you to, to keep it simple. I would say only use 0 0.1, which is a six minute interval or 0 0.5, which is a 30 minute interval and the smaller your interval the longer it's going to take to do things so 0.5 is kind of your best bet now let's go ahead and net back up here one final simple thing here regardless of whether you use time series output or not or you just want your maximums you have to run your simulation for the full simulation time so if this is 24 or 10 or uh, 36 or whatever you have to run your model to the end of the simulation you can't just run it to the peak and then shut it down all right so I've already done that and I already have results that are run so I'm just going to show you that if you go into here and you grab this guy here and you put it on mesh then you can just load that and I like I would just like to always just pick up the depth even though it doesn't matter it's just the way I do it and then you click uh, you, so you load that up and you click add and it will add your two layers in or one layer in. It'll take a 2D and a 1D layer, but I usually only use the 2D. And then you close that out. Now what we need from that, so right here is your layer styling panel, which is also right here because I put it on with my Flow 2D panel. So um, we want to be on that mesh 2D layer. And what you get if you ran an animation is you get a bed elevation, a time-based depth, a maximum depth, time-based velocity, maximum water velocity, time-based water level, maximum water level. Um, since this is a rainfall mo model, the water levels are kind of useless. And because, you know, there's just going to be water everywhere, so it doesn't really show you much. And we are going to add the hazard, uh, a depth times velocity, and a hazard depth and velocity. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. It's actually not too difficult. So if you click here um, on the mesh but, uh, drop down and then you click the mesh calculator, you can add another layer and based off of calculations from your data. So if you want to save this to a file, make sure you set it to flow 2D and then, you know, browse to wherever you want your file to go and name it. Um, otherwise, if you want to do virtual, you can do virtual. So I'm going to do, I've already done it, but I just want to show you how to do it again. So this is just hazard base off of depth. And what we have is two things. We have this PowerPoint presentation that's already on your computer in your Flow2D documentation in the PowerPoint slides um, folder. And it has, a, it's a full presentation on how to calculate hazard with or for Flow2D. We have many different ways to calculate hazard, but let's just focus on the easiest one. And that is to use kind of a lookup table. And we're looking up depth 
and a depth times velocity. Uh, and, and so basically we're just taking those fields from the mesh layers and and we're using lookup table to determine whether they're a level one, two, or three hazard. Uh, and we have these guys right here to help us build those conditional statements into the mesh calculator. So for example, we, now my project is in feet and this table is in metric so we're, or meters. So we're going to maybe like use both of those numbers. So don't get confused. I'm just going to do like maybe some on the fly trans uh, conversions for that. So um, for the low hazard, I'm not going to use the if statement of, or sorry, I'm not going to use a conditional statement of having the depth be between two. I'm going to just use anything less than 0 0.5 meters or 1.5 feet. And uh, same thing for the one when we're going to start with just depth only, and then we'll do the depth times velocity and the depth secondly. So that would be our low hazard, anything less than 1.5 feet. The medium hazard would be anything between 0.5 meters and 1.5 meters or, you know, 1.5 and 4.5 feet. And the final one is anything over 4.5 feet is going to be a high hazard depth. Now, that those are the numbers that you have control over. So if you don't like these values or you don't agree with these values for water and these values for mud flow, then use your own values. That's perfectly fine. So I uh, just wanted to show you that this helps you calculate them. Now, we have the hazard depth. Now, I already have one in there, so I'm going to have to call this hazard depth too. And I have the conditional statements here that I worked out using Microsoft Excel, but they're a little bit different because they're not quite as elegant as Microsoft Excel. So if you come here and you put your depth on one side and you put your velocities on the other side and you put your depth times velocity here, as you can see, that's depth times velocity, then you get an opportunity to make some nested if statements that will set up the conditions by which the, cat, uh, the categories are one for low hazard, two for medium hazard, or three for high hazard. And then I had to mess around with this to uh, get it to manipulate it so that it worked for the mesh calculator because the mesh calculator is slightly different. So let me go back to the mesh calculator. I'm gonna, first I'm gonna copy this and we'll go back to the mesh calculator and put this in there. But before I do that, I just wanted to show you a simple if statement, and that is this guy right here. So if your condition is true, you get this data. If your condition is false, you get this data. So that's how simple if statements are. I'm going to show you the nested if statements where we have the three conditions. So if the depth maximum is less than 1.5, that becomes a low hazard. If the depth maximum is between 1.5 and 4.4, or we can maybe make this 4.5, I think if I leave this at 4.4, I have some zeros in there, so that, that could be an issue. So if the depth maximum is between uh, 1.5 and 4.4 or 4.5, let's just maybe try that, then you get a level two hazard. And then the last if statement, if the depth maximum is greater than 4.5, you get a level three hazard. And if something messes up, we get a level Z, a zero. So I think because I'm not using if equal or greater than equals, or less than equals, we might see some zeros, but I'm gonna turn all my zeros after I do this. Well, you'll see I have some zeros in these guys, but I'm gonna turn all these instead of zeros. Let's just set them all to three. That way they just become a high hazard regardless. Okay, so the the two thing, or well, the, the one thing about this that's different than Excel is that if in Excel, you don't put an and in the conditional statement. It doesn't really work very good, but in mesh calculator, the or and the and work really good. So you have to kind of set this up as the depth maximums are uh, greater than 1.5 and the depth maximums are less than 4.5, they're, then they're in the range of two. So that's just something funky about it, the difference between this and Excel. So I'm gonna click okay. 
And what you're going to see is that we have a new layer here. So if I click on that as my layer, you'll also see that the colors are just totally wrong. So what we'll do is we'll come here to our color generator and we will um, change it from linear to discrete for the interpolation. And we will change this mode to equal interval and set the number of classes to three. And uh, so this should be one and this should be two, and this should be three, and this should be low, and this should be medium, because these are the labels, and this should be high, and the color, and then the colors. The low color should be yellow, and the medium color should be orange, and the high um, color should be red. And then you just go back to select colors and you can see that you have low, medium, and high values. Now, again, like I said, you know, there's clearly some areas in here that should be like probably a level four or a level three hazard, but because of that LIDAR data, they just didn't get much depth in there. So whatever the rainfall is in addition to that, but th this is an odd case where we have LIDAR data that was on top of a bunch of ponded water. I would suggest to you that in, in a mud flow model or a tailings dam breach, you would not see that anyway. And so what I would probably do is I would probably just come in here and maybe set those up as a high hazard anyway. Maybe put a mask in there and apply a high hazard, or I could just change these values right here, you know, so that everything greater than, you know, um, maybe one foot got a high hazard. So the next thing we'll do, we'll do is, well, I can't do this just yet. I actually have, well, no, I can because I already made it. Sorry. The next thing to do is to come to the mesh calculator and you have to do your depth times velocity field. Now, I've already done it but I wanna show you how easy it is to do. So I'm just gonna do it again. And I'll call this D times V2. Uh, and then I'll click down here, the depth maximums times the velocity maximums and go ahead and just, oh, sorry, uh, virtual. And go ahead and just click okay. And then if you come back here, you'll see that you indeed have an additional layer of depth times velocity. Um, but obviously we don't need it because we already had one. I just wanted to show you how to do it. So the next step will be to go back to your mesh calculator and do the uh, depth, the hazard with depth and velocity. So I'm going to give it the same name, but I'm going to say two. And we'll just call this layer number two and everything else up here is fine. And the change, the difference is now is that we have a much more complicated nested if statement with these conditions. So I'm gonna copy that and paste it into our expression B or our expression window. And we'll just kind of go over this a little bit because it is confusing and it definitely doesn't work the same way that Excel works. It's a little bit more complicated. Um, so what we have here is if the depth maximum is less than 1.5 and the depth times velocity is less than 1.5, it gets a level one hazard. So the funny thing about this project is that it doesn't have a whole lot of high velocities mo because the water is mostly ponded. The next one, the, the level two, is even more complicated. So now let's get this whole thing. So if the depth maximums, and just remember, you have to have this and condition in here to get the between two numbers weight to work. So if the 1.5 and the 4. Point, if the depth maximum is between 1.5 and 4.4, or the depth times velocity is between 1.5 and 4.4 and again I think I was going to give that a 
a 4.5 just to try to eliminate some of that no data that I was getting. Then you get a level two hazard. And then of course the final if, the final nested if statement is if your depth maximum is greater than 4.5 or your depth times velocity is greater than 4.5, you get a level three hazard. And just to catch anything that I accident, you know, like I had some, because I'm not using the greater than equal to, I might get some values in here that are stragglers. And so I'm just gonna give those a, a three instead of a zero. And I'll just give them a high hazard just to kind of catch all. And then I'll click OK. And again, it's kind of the exact same thing. So you come back here and you plot your hazard times velocity. Uh, except that didn't work. Now it worked. I don't, I'm not seeing anything, but it definitely worked. All right, let's try this discrete. And uh, let's go with equal interval, three classes, one, two, two, three, and low. Whoops, I need a space in there. Medium and high. I'm not sure what happened. I did something wrong with that one. Low, medium, high. It might have, and let's see, and classify? No. Apply. One, two, three. And, oh, duh. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> okay, uh, I turned off the results. All right, let's go here and just put these colors in. Low is yellow and medium is orange. And red is high or high is red. And then you have the two layers. So if I get out of there and I come back here, I now have the two layers that will represent the hazard. So here's your, your hazard from your depth, and here is your hazard from your depth and velocity. Now, one of the things that's interesting is that we actually reduced the hazard because the water is moving so slow because it's such a flat area, the velocities are always less than one. So that makes this method not really work that good. So if you have a, um, like a breach model or something like that, this method will work a lot better for you because you're getting water that's actually moving. And in this case, we have a lot of water that's just ponded and sitting there and maybe even running backward because of the potential tide control. But um, you still have the ability to make adjustments to those numbers to get you know, a realistic hazard. So uh, I will put, the, in the description of the video, I will put these two uh, conditional statements so that you can get these and you can manipulate the numbers and test them on your own projects and um, I'll stop the recording here.